Maryland's defensive line is the key to a nine-win season. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you guys all for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Maryland's defensive line is the key to the Terps reaching a nine-win season or above. Coach Loxley said it on, um, go check out the new uh, Terps episode uh, about Maryland football. Um, It was actually pretty interesting where they just talked about it went through um, asking Coach Loxley some um, questions, and um, it's on their athletics page. And it's like it's kind of similar to a hard knocks type of deal, but it's like a ten minute video on Maryland's football team. And so I saw that yesterday, and Coach Loxley was talking to the team and was like, eight and five is not good enough basically anymore, and we're stuck there." And I was thinking, okay. We have been stuck at eight and five. We've been stuck around eight wins the last couple of years, seven wins the year before that. And now I'm starting to say, what can get us over the hump to get us to a nine-win season? What part of our team can really we can really come together as a unit and get us over the hump? And I believe that's the Maryland defensive line unit. I think that the Maryland defensive line unit is the key to getting to the Terps to a nine-win season. I think, for one, it's one of the strengths of our team. And I I don't know if we've had – I don't know the last time we've had a group up front that was so strong. I think that we had just about everybody in that room come back. So in terms of experience in the Big Ten, in terms of experience playing, we get just about every starter on the defensive line unit back. And when I say defensive line unit, I mean – I mean the D tackles, I mean the interior of the defensive line, but I also mean the edge guys. So I usually count the um, outside linebackers when I think of guys like I think of it more as the pass rushers. Like I usually count um, Quayshon Fuller, of course, and then Donnell Brown, um, and then um, as well as Kellen Wyatt. I usually count those guys when I'm talking about defensive line unit, just so you guys are clear. I don't just uh, count the um, Jordan Phillips and a King Basote. I, I count really everybody up front um, and even kind of the outside linebacker types of guys, the guys that are going to rush the passer. And I believe that one of the things in the Big Ten that differentiates you and really makes a difference between rosters and makes a difference between a team being good to great is up front. It's all about the offensive and defensive lines in the Big Ten. Yeah, quarterback play is obviously the most important, but I think that the defensive line unit for the Terps could have a huge year, and I think that it is probably, in my opinion, the strongest part of our team, and I think that when you look at different examples over the last couple of years of teams that have made it all the way and teams that win the big game, the biggest difference is up front. Last year, when I watched the Bama-Michigan game in the semifinal, I thought my biggest takeaway was Bama's offensive line had a lot of trouble um, blocking Michigan's offensive line, or defensive line, excuse me. And I think that was probably the biggest difference in the game, and maybe it was the difference between Alabama winning the national championship and making it to the national championship and having the opportunity to play Washington versus Michigan. When we go back and watch that game, you look at it, it went into overtime. There wasn't a huge different uh, difference in terms of the scoreboard, but I think that Michigan's defensive line made it so hard on Alabama's offensive line. And you look at different teams like that. You look at Michigan last year specifically. That's just one team. But when you look back at it, Ohio State's defensive line has always been elite. All the top teams in the Big Ten last year, Penn State's defensive line, elite. All the upper echelon teams, On the Big Ten, Ohio State, Penn State, and now you look at Oregon coming in. They all have really good guys up front, and that's a 
big part of the reason why they're able to have so much success on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Loxley has already told you, this is going to be a defensive-led group. This is not going to be the same Maryland as the past where we're just going to chuck the ball all over the place and we're going to be able to score 30 uh, to 40 points and we're going to win that way. No, it's going to be about getting stops. And getting stops is going to start with the defensive line unit. I think it's the strongest part of our team when I look at it. And I think we have a couple guys up there that are studs. I think Jordan Phillips is a stud. I was watching the Maryland thing um, that I was talking to you guys about, that um, uh, that kind of hard knocks-esque video of Maryland, 15 minutes on their athletic page. Go check it out. I was watching that. I forget exactly what they call it, but – Jordan Phillips was saying, nobody is going to outwork me. And he was in the Terps facility at 3.30 a.m. I'm a college athlete, and you have to do some early wake-ups, but I've never had to wake up at 3.30. That's pretty crazy for him to be in there at 3.30, watching film with different NFL defensive linemen. It showed. It was pretty cool to see that. And Jordan Phillips already took a huge step last year, but – I think he's one of the best defense linemen in the Big Ten. He's going to be a huge key to the Terps being able to solidify, yeah, an eight-win season again, but get to a nine-win type of season to take the next step. It's going to be a lot of it's going to be on Jordan Phillips on the inside and Tommy King basote in terms of stopping the run this year. When we play teams like an Oregon, like Rutgers has really good running game. Like a Penn State's going to have a really good run game. Even just teams like Michigan State, Minnesota, those are guys in the front, in the middle of that defense, are going to be the key to stopping the run. And I love Jordan Phillips. I love Tommy king Basote coming back. Probably your most underrated duo in the Big Ten. And then guys like Isaac Bunyan, Tazay Johnson, behind those guys to solidify that defensive line um, in the interior. And so I really do like those guys, and I think they're going to be a huge key in a stopping the run. Um, which is going to be big for this team because we're going to be a defensive-led team. We're going to have to be able to stop the run. And then when I look at the pass rushers, we got three guys that I love. And Quayson Fuller last year, honorable Big Ten, um, honorable mention all Big Ten, is poised for a huge run um, in passing the um, in terms of rushing the passer. And so I think we're going to have an opportunity to see Quayson Fuller take another step up. And in terms of the other side, Kellen White and Donnell Brown as well are going to have a chance to have really big seasons for the Terps. And when I look at the Terps defense, the strength is definitely up front. It's not in that cornerback room. And to bail out that inexperienced corner room to that inexperienced secondary, um, you're going to have to get to the passer. And I think that if we're not able to do that, if the defensive line's not able to get after some of these guys, and really rush the passer, we're not going to win some games because I can see a world where our secondary struggles, and even if they don't, even if they're solid, it's still harder, a lot harder when your defensive line unit isn't getting there. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I say the Terps defensive line unit is going to be the key to us reaching the next height of nine wins. I've seen teams be able to win with just decent quarterback play or just okay quarterback play because they're either their defense was able to play really well or a different part of their uh, team was able to play really well, like the run game was able to be really high level or things like that. And so when I think of the Terps team, I really do think that that can be Maryland's team. I'm not saying that the quarterback play is going to be iffy, but I'm saying that there's a pretty good chance that it's not amazing or what it's been. And so I look at the Terps defensive line unit and the defense overall, but specifically the D line unit as a unit that can really make up for some of that loss in that quarterback room. That's why I believe that it's the key to winning, uh, getting to the next step. You can have a lot of really good parts of your football team. And so to make up for some quarterback play, I've seen it last year, Iowa, couldn't score the ball on offense, but still ends up having a solid season overall, being in a solid bowl game, it seems like, every year. And they couldn't play offense last year. Their offense was horrific last year. And that's what I'm saying. Like It's not always about the offense and scoring a million points. Sometimes 
you're going to have to have some guys on the defensive line unit that are going to stop the run, which we have Jordan Phillips, Aking Basote, Taze Johnston, uh, Quayshon Fuller is going to help stop the run, Isaac Bunyan, our linebacker room too, but I'm really focusing on defensive line unit. And then, of course, guys that can rush the passers, Donnell Brown, Quayshon Fuller, Kellen Wyatt, some younger guys that I like too. And I so I think that Maryland defensive line unit has a chance to really allow this team and really carry this team to a new height. I'm not saying they're going to be able to do it single-handedly, but they're going to be the key to the Terps getting to the next step as a program. And if this unit doesn't perform, you can forget about it. The Terp season will be below what they've been, and that's just the way that the roster is made up of. Last year, Talia was the experienced part of the team. That was the part of the team that was experienced. That was a team part of the team that had played a lot of football. It was a quarterback room. It was a receiver room. But now it shifts. It's the safety room. It's a defensive line unit. It's a little bit of the linebacker room. So we got to change with that. Maryland basketball, there's no reason shouldn't be in the top 25 at the end of the season. I will talk about that after this ad from the Game Time app. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I've been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of an event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last-minute tickets and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked on College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Maryland basketball. I wanted to touch on them today because I feel like a lot of people have been asking for some basketball content. And I think that this team, there's no reason, shouldn't be a top 25 team by the end of the year. I love this Maryland basketball team. And I'm ready to finally get a decent basketball team after what I seen last year. And we're going to start talking about football a lot, of course, because it's football season and football's here. There's preseason games today. And the college football season is going to be starting before we know it in a, um, in a couple of weeks. And so we're going to be looking at it and we're going to be saying, okay, it's football season. But believe it or not, when you get into football season – basketball season comes pretty fast and before you know it it's time for basketball season and so I'm prepared for this Terps basketball team because I think has a real chance of having a really good team in November 4th first game against Manhattan a game that the Terps should win by a pretty large amount game shouldn't really be close at all but my point is the Terps should end this year in the top 25 this team's way too talented. This team's way too deep. And just there's guys that I think have a chance to be all Big Ten. I think we have a potential freshman of the year in the Big Ten. I think we have a lot of pieces to say there's no reason why we shouldn't be a top 25 team. Really, probably pretty close into the year and by the end of the year, and that should be good enough to get us at least a six or seven seed in March Madness and probably something, maybe even something a little bit harder or um, excuse me, a little um, not harder, um, a little bit um, farther up um, in terms of the seeding. But I love this team in terms of one, we have a guard that we really like in Jacoby Gillespie transfer from Belmont who I was reading some stuff on, and people are saying Maryland basketball has another great lead guard. We've had a lot of them over the last couple of years. You think about Anthony Cowan, you think about Mel Trimble, and of course, Jabir Young um, last year, who was the really only shining spot of our pretty dark season last year was Jameer Young. And so 
we've had really good guard play. And when Maryland basketball has been good, it's often been led by that really high level, high end Big Ten type of guard. And I think a lot of people are believing that Jacoby Gillespie is going to be that. And so that's pretty good to hear that we're going to have a guard like Jacoby Gillespie that's going to be able to operate the offense, be able to score the ball, be able to shoot the ball, be able to pass the ball in the start off. So you have a guy that has a chance to be a really good player at the guard position. And then Maryland releases this highlight on their Instagram of Selton Miguel um, transfer that came in this year. And he's absolutely getting buckets in that. And his jump shot looks sweet and his shot creation. And I'm like, Dang, we are going to have Jacoby Gillespie next to Selton Miguel, who I think is going to be a really good piece, a veteran presence to the team, to a team that is, I wouldn't say we're a young team, but we definitely have some young guys in there. And I'm saying, oh, wow, okay. He's the guy that can shoot the lights out. And Jacoby Gillespie can also shoot the ball at a really high level. So you have two guards that can shoot the ball at a higher level than what we saw last year. We Shot the ball so poorly last year and it really hurt. And I think you have two guys that are going to shoot the ball really well um, in terms of Gillespie and Miguel. And then Deshaun Harris-Smith, who I'm guessing starts. Rodney Rice has to be in that conversation as well. Rodney Rice is also a great shooter. Transfer from Virginia Tech, who I also really like his game. And I'm saying with Deshaun Harris-Smith, those four guys making up your guard rotation – that means we're in a pretty good spot. Um, and there's also guys when you look down the roster too, um, like a Malachi Palmer potentially um, that could impact us and make and as a freshman. Um, and John Rothstein, I think, said that he has a chance to be in the, um, in the line or not in the lineup, but in the rotation. And so we have different guys. And you look at that doesn't even – that it doesn't even get me started talking about the front court that I think is probably one of the best in the Big Ten, if not the best in the Big Ten, the side of the ball that's going to lead the Terps with their queen five-star um, from Mount Verde, who's played at that high level, played with Cooper Pl- Flag, um, played with the Liam McNeil guy that's at a uh, UConn now. Like he's played with some of the best players in the country, and he was one of the best players on that Mount Verde team, which is considered one of the best high school basketball teams of all time. And so I'm looking at him along with Julian Reese, who's good for 13 and 10 every night. And I'm saying, with Jordan Geronimo as a backup, who was a starter last year, Terps seems special, man. This team has a chance to be really good, like really good. Like I don't think people realize how good this team can be like, If this team's not rated in the top 25 at the end of the year, it's a disappointment. If this team's not in March Madness at the end of the year, it's a huge disappointment because this team's way too good not to be there. They just are. There's too many pieces. There's too much depth. There's too many guys. There's too many dudes that can play at a high level. And when I think about the weaknesses last year, I think we fixed a lot of that. Shooting, we got... A lot better with shooting the ball. Chance Stevens also comes back from injury. Another guard that I forgot to mention. That's supposed to be a really good shooter. Besides Deshaun Harris-Smith, every guard I can really think of is a good shooter on this team. And Deshaun Harris-Smith, I know, is working his butt off to make sure that he can shoot the ball better than he did last year. And so when I think of the weaknesses of last year's team, shooting, offensive things, I think I look at, This team, and I say, this team's going to be a lot better offensively. This team's going to be a lot better shooting. And I think this team will be just as good defensively. And if we have that, we have the makings to be a top 25 team in the nation and to have a chance to have a really good season for Maryland football. Or basketball, excuse me. We've been talking so much football. I got the um, football in my head. But Maryland basketball has a chance to have a really top-end season Um, Kevin Willard should have a good team on his hands. The next Maryland football commit, who could it be? I'll tell you that right now, actually. Isaiah Hammond could be the next big commitment for Maryland football. So 
Sorry, my thing just broke up for a second. But Isaiah Hammond could be the next big commit for Maryland football. And so this kid is very interesting, this um, Isaiah Hammond kid, who I think is going to be the perfect replacement for a guy that we actually just lost. So you guys saw that we lost. I talked about it yesterday. Dante Simpson flipped to Miami last week, which made a lot of sense. He was from the Miami area um, in Florida, and it's hard to keep those Florida kids. And his dream school all along apparently was Miami. And like I said yesterday, I can't blame him for wanting to go to Miami. It seems like a pretty awesome spot to be. And so we lose um, Sim- we lose Simpson, but we need to pick somebody else up on along the defensive line unit. I think that's probably our weakest position in terms of what we've recruited, which is kind of ironic because today I've said that our defensive line unit is going to be the key to a nine-win season, and I do believe that. But the defensive line unit definitely has been the weakest part of our team overall or overall in terms of recruiting. Um, and I think that we – I want to get some more guys at the top. Bryce Jenkins, four-star, comes in. Um, in the class who could play offensive line as well, but he looks to be a defensive lineman. So we got a four-star defensive lineman coming in. There's a couple other guys, but we haven't really, I feel like developed a lot of the guys on the defensive line unit. But I think that Isaiah Hammond could be a guy that could fit perfectly. He'll replace Dante Simpson in terms of uh, the defensive line, in terms of the defensive tackle spot. So he's a chance to replace Dante Simpson as well as, I think that he's a guy that is really well sized, and he's also a DMV kid. He's listed at six five, almost six six, so six five and a half, two seventy five. So there's a little bit room to grow into, which I always say is a good thing. You don't always want these guys to come in already made, already two hundred pounds. I talked to a couple of football kids, and they're like, "Yeah, they they prefer guys offensive linemen, defensive linemen to come in at like two eighty or so, or 270, and then they can put that college weight on you and they can do it the right way. And, t- and they rather that than have a guy where they have to kind of slim him down or lose weight or he's kind of already where he's supposed to be, but he's not constructed the right way. So I think that him coming in at around 270, maybe it's 280 by now, um, is a really good thing. As well as he's a DMV kid, goes to Calvert Hall College in um, Baltimore area. So I think he could be a really perfect fit for Maryland football. And I would guess that Maryland's the favorite right now. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but he does have some other offers that I know he likes. Like Charlotte is definitely uh warm for him right now as in Virginia tech is as well. So that seems to be kind of the three, but I would guess probably that Maryland football is at the top. He had other offers like, West Virginia, he had South Carolina, Pitt, he had Boston College, like he had some other uh, power four offers, but I do think that Maryland is the right spot for him just because we haven't particularly recruited defensive linemen at as high of a level as I've wanted, and I've said it, I think those that's like the biggest difference right now in the Big Ten, offensive and defensive line, and so if we can start recruiting this spot a little bit better for the Terps, I think it puts us in a better spot, but I do think that he's a guy that we want. And then as, and I also talked about yesterday, I talked about Messiah Del home, who also is potentially the next big commitment on our board in terms of recruiting status, in terms of being a four star. Um, He makes his decision very soon. Um, I think it's in the next couple of days. He makes his decision. So we'll see where he goes. But if we can land both of these guys, I would be really nice because we need a safety in our 2025 class. And that's what Messiah Del Home is, which I talked about it yesterday. Go check that out if you want to hear more about him. But then we also need defensive line. So I think Isaiah Hammond could be also a really good fit for the Terps and could make a lot of sense. So these two guys could come together to form a perfect commitment duo for the Terps. But I feel a lot more confident about us landing Isaiah um, Hammond rather than Messiah Dalhoun, which seems a little bit more iffy and seems like Ohio State's really trending towards him. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.